This is Richard Wolff for Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. And this one comes from John Culver. John asks about a secretary in a factory that makes solar panels. She or he is not directly involved in the production of solar panels. He or she is a secretary uh, doing the things that secretaries normally do. And while John understands the argument about surplus value produced by workers making solar panels in that factory, he wonders how we should understand and in particularly quantify the social or surplus value that the secretary produces. So let me respond. In Marxian economic theory, where this notion of the surplus is the most developed among the available economic theories, Marx makes a distinction between two kinds of workers, two different groups within something he calls the working class. He calls one of them productive workers, and think of those as the men and women in the solar panel factory that are working on making solar panels, working with machines on raw materials, converting the metal, the plastic, and so on into the solar panel. But there's a second group of workers in every factory. They are not involved directly in making solar panels. They are doing other absolutely and equivalently necessary work. For example, the secretary. And I'll give you more examples in a couple of minutes. The secretary does correspondence. The secretary handles inquiry. The secretary answers questions of potential or actual clients and customers. All of those things must be done or else the business falls apart. If you only have productive workers who literally make the solar panels and stack them in the corner when they're done, the business will die. People have to be engaged in all kinds of other activities to make the enterprise viable. Someone has to work to sell the solar panels. That's not the same as making them. Somebody has to keep records of how many hours each of the workers worked so that they can be properly paid and so that the relationship between the work and the wage and so on leads these workers to come back each day to do the work or else the enterprise dies. Marx made this distinction around the term productive and unproductive workers productive and unproductive labor. This was perhaps an unfortunate choice of uh, language because it led people to think that somehow he was rendering the unproductive laborers, such as a secretary, as somehow secondary, unimportant, or in some way lesser than the productive. Not the case. On many occasions, M Marx makes it very clear that the unproductive laborer is exactly and just as important to the viability of the enterprise as the productive. He just wanted to show that they are different in one important way. The productive worker, when he or she works, produces surplus. That is, they add more value by their work than is paid to them in wages or salaries for performing the work. The unproductive laborer is completely different. That person is not producing surplus because they are not adding value to, for example, the tools, equipment, and raw materials because they're not engaged in that activity. They're doing something else. What the unproductive laborer does is enable the productive laborer to be, in fact, productive of surplus. The reason that the men and women producing solar panels 
are able to produce value-laden output, adding the value of their labor into it, is because all of the enabling work, such as is done by a secretary, is going on, is being done. It's a little bit like setting something up for other people then to do something. Without the setup, for example, if you're shooting a scene in a movie, there has to be the equipment, the cameras, the microphone, all of that has to be done. The film isn't made only by the actors and actresses who enact the scenario. No, 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 no. And you have to understand how this works. And now here comes Marx's way of linking these two. The productive workers, the ones in his example of a solar panel factory, produce those solar panels by their labor. The value of those solar panels equals the total labor put into producing them by everybody who made the tools, equipment, and raw material, and then by the value added by the workers at the last step when the solar panel is produced. The value added by those workers is greater than the value paid to them in their wages, and that's the surplus. Who gets it? The employer. That's why it's called capitalism. The employer is in the business to get that surplus because that surplus is the difference between the money the capitalist throws into the production process and what he takes out of it. That difference, typically called profit in Marx, for particular reasons, is called surplus. Then the employer takes the surplus, and here comes the cru crucial point. He takes a portion of the surplus and uses it to pay for all of the enabling work done by the unproductive workers. He hires the secretary to do his or her job, the security guard to watch the place at night, the lawyer to handle any legal issues, and so on. There's a lot of unproductive laborers that have to be paid to make this system work. But the difference is crucial. One group of workers produces the surplus, and part of that surplus is distributed to the other kinds of workers to do their tasks. Ironically, what would socialism or communism then be? Avoid the middleman, no more capitalist. The workers who produce the surplus would together decide in negotiation with the unproductive workers, but there would no longer be the need for a, an excessive, unnecessary other player in this game, namely the capitalist. You don't need him. You just need to distribute a part of the surplus to sustain those who enable the surplus to be produced. This is Richard Wolff for Democracy at Work.